is. It's the way you can examine yourself. You examine yourself first in the light of God's word. Secondly, you look at your own fruit. When you are feel condemned or guilty, you know that is Satan. When you did not perform well in your own eyes, and so you feel guilty about you did not do well enough, you did this wrong, you, you feel guilty, condemned. This is never Jesus. Because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is easily discerned. When you thought, when you think maybe you went wrong somewhere and you feel so guilty, you know there's a second accusing you. You can chase him, amen? Your God does not work with guilt. He works with conviction. The person of conviction, my friend, is not easily be moved. He is not easily be swayed. He does not, he does not get tossed through and throw by every wind of doctrine or new idea coming along. But he's steadfast in God's word. Person of conviction, the great I am, when you discover yourself in the great I am, you know who you are. You can also say, I am who I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Jesus. Now also grow in that grace that is in Jesus. There's lots of grace in Jesus. I heard many people say different things about grace. What is the greatest grace that you can get? I'm going to catch you. We want to answer. What is the greatest grace you can get? There's different grace. What is the greatest grace that you can get? Hey, brother. Can I tell you what is the greatest grace you can get? It is grace. Give Jesus a hand. <laughs> that grace is the blood of Jesus, man. Who saves me, who forgives me, who redeems me, who cleanses me, who put my past behind me. It is that cross who brings division between me and my past, who set my past behind me. That the devil can never accuse me again. When the devil comes to accuse you of 15 years ago, you say, what are you talking about? Your liar and accuser? The cross, boom, separate you from your past. The cross is the new beginning because that is where the king, the sinless one, has paid the price for you as the guilty one. The sinless one, the non-guilty one, paid the price for you as a guilty one. The one who never knew sin became sin on your behalf so that you might be free by the grace that is freely available in Jesus. This grace you need to apply to your life too. There's many graces. The greatest grace is grace. Give Jesus a hand. <clears throat> Hallelujah. To have faith, to be able to have faith is a grace. No one can believe without God's grace. I mean, a grace to you. Jesus is God's grace unto you and everything that is in him. Hallelujah. To have faith is a grace. To be able to forgive your enemies is grace. Who can forgive his enemy without God's grace? Huh? Hallelujah. When you take this grace and apply it to your life, say for instance, you've got hatred in your heart. We're all human beings. Say real issues in a real life, real enemies. This is the life that we live. I mean, you're in a real world with real problems, with real enemies, with real issues. So now you're the enemy. The enemy is attacking you. The one who has been loyal to you, that you thought is loyal in your work situation, all of a sudden betray you. This is the greatest pain, is betrayal. There's not a greater pain than betrayal. You thought this guy's with you. You thought that he loved you. And all of a sudden, he stabbed you in the back, and he turned his back on you, and he... All the things that you told him in conference, he started to share with others. You all of a sudden experience of the greatest pain that a man or a woman can experience. Now you start to battle. You start to hate that person. Now you've got a battle on your hands. Satan, now you need grace. 
because you're not going to forgive that person in yourself. Now you need grace. Amen? Now this grace is available in Jesus. Say, in Jesus, it is available to me. Now the Bible says that Jesus is in us by the Holy Spirit. So this grace is now in me, but I need to apply this grace and take it and put it into action. I need to forgive. This is not done by trying so very hard to forgive. You will fail. But this is to move in the Spirit and accept the grace that is available to you, that grace to be able to forgive your enemy, to forgive the one who betrayed you. That is a grace that is available to you in Jesus. If it was you that have to forgive and try so hard to forgive, you would not need grace. But now that no man is able to do it without Jesus, because every human being is imperfect, Jesus was the only perfect one. Hallelujah. But don't confuse forgiveness with compromise. Say to the guy next to you, don't confuse forgiveness with, with compromise. Many people think, what did Jesus do when he went to the temple and did not find true fruit? Did you think he walked with unforgiveness in his heart towards the Jews and the temple? Huh? But he was angry. The Bible says, be angry and do not sin. So many people think Jesus is only this loving, all forgiving, nice guy. You make a mistake. He's the Lamb of God, but he's also the Lion of Judah. Say the Lamb of God but also the line of Judah. 